Hello again. DIY slash CNC woodworker here with you. Uh, this morning we're going to uh, assemble our first uh, separate motor uh, for the X carriage. We're going to assemble it to that assembly. Uh, looks like my computer problems I had yesterday simply were the fact that it wasn't charged. I leave it charged, left it charged overnight. And uh, it seems to be working fine this morning, so I apologize to Mr. Dale, and uh, we'll continue. This is a stepper motor here, just a little electric motor, basically. Y'all should know what that is. And the first step here is to uh, put the uh, pulley on the motor. There are two very, very small. Uh, locking screws here that I had to put on which I've already done that now I want to take and put this on the pulley just like that line it up with the end of that shaft temporarily it will have to be further adjusted once it's on the machine to line it up with the belts and I'm just momentarily or not momentarily, but slightly tightening these set screws just enough to hold that pulley on there. Okay. And then the next step is to uh, attach this to the X carriage. M5 by 10 socket head cap screws. Uh, there's four of these it says and I need four to mount this. Come on out of there. There you go. The X carriage. This is supposed to go down. until I get the other ones lined up and on. Tighten these down in a cross pattern or an X pattern, as it said. Putting a slight amount of torque on it, not that much, but enough to hold it on there firmly. do it too much and risk stripping these boats. Okay, that should be that. Let's see what this says here. OK, 
Okay, the next thing to do is mounting a drag chain. What I'm going to do now is uh, pause, pause the video while I get these parts out and get them set up. And uh, you don't need me videoing me searching for all those parts. So I will pause the video. This is the one motor that's mounted. You can see the pulley through here. And uh, we will come back when I've got those other parts ready to assemble. Okay, we're back. Uh, took a little bit of doing to figure this one out. As good as their instructions are, and as good as everything is packaged, this is something that uh, caused me a little concern for a moment. They talk about uh, a drag chain male end link, and it's got a number 30331-09. And I looked through all my little packages here that are labeled so nicely that you can find everything. I could not find anything that said uh, drag chain mail in link 331039. So I pulled out the drag chain themselves and on the end of the drag chain is this little link that pops out and that's what it was. Now it would have been nice if they had told you where that was but they didn't. They left it up to you to figure out. And then this little bracket here that I'm mounting, they've got pictures of it on their website, but they're really hard to see. You could have, but we figured it out, studying the photos and uh, looking at everything. It was done, no harm done. So that's it there. This is the. This is the drag chain mail in link. A couple of button head cap screws and, and uh, uh, nylon locking nuts. And these two screws here that screw into tapped holes. That mounts that and eventually my drag chain link for this uh, X carriage will link here and it'll go back and forth as this moves back and forth across the carriage. So that's it. Now let's see what the next step is. Next step is mounting the terminal block. Take a little bunch of terminal blocks. So what I'm going to do is uh, pause the film again and uh, study this to see exactly what it is I'm expected to do and. Uh, once I've figured that out, I'll come back and uh, show you what I've done. Okay, the next step is to mount this uh, terminal block to the X carriage. Only problem I had, it took quite a bit of fiddling here to get these holes. It looked like they didn't quite line up right, but you got to just kind of hold your teeth right and screw this thing down. But I finally got it started after quite a bit of fiddling with it. Now fiddling for you folks that don't know what that is, that's a southern terminology for trying to get something to work. At least where I grew up it was. But I finally got them started and got them in the holes. It took a little bit, but I couldn't quite figure out what was going on here. But we got it. It's a very tight fit. The only way I could get it to do was to back both screws out to just the bare minimum through the sticking through the uh, terminal strip itself and once I got them to catch in the hole where they go it screwed on down okay a little tight but it's there 
That's your 10 strip or 10 terminal terminal strip. That was the next step. And the next step now, let's see here. Uh, where are we at? Mounting the terminal block. Step seven is mounting the X axis limit switch. If you purchase the limit switch, click below to mount your X axis limit switch. So I need to click on this little thing here and it brings up instructions and photos on how to limit this, uh, how to uh, not limit this, how to mount the limit switch. So what I'm going to do is again pause the film, video, uh, read through this, find all my parts, get everything ready to assemble, and uh, get it put on, make sure everything's on there correctly, and then I'll turn the video back on and show you what I've done. Again, I'm not going to film every little step, every little thing I do because between these clips I can spend quite a, a large amount of time searching through all these numerous parts they have, finding the correct parts, uh, studying this, interpreting in my mind what they're trying to tell me to do, and then actually putting it together. And uh, that can be, that can run into a little bit of time, so I won't waste that much time with the video but what I will do is once I've got it all done and completed show you the completed steps so you can see uh, the step-by-step -step procedure that I had to go through to assemble this uh, router so for now I'll uh, pause the film again and we'll be back with you shortly okay folks this is short and sweet on this part this is assembling the uh, first of the limit switches that I have. This is the limit switch for the X carriage. I thought the parts that I've been dealing with to date were short. Were, were, were short. Let me tell you. Short. That's not what I meant to say. Small. And these parts are really small. Now, I suffer from FFS. If you don't know what that is, it's called fat finger syndrome. And uh, by golly, I couldn't hardly handle these things. There's little screws and little T90 nuts and little bitty small washers, but I got them. That's it. If you can see it here, the limit switch on the X carriage. Now what I'm going to do, I tried using this jeweler screwdriver, but it didn't want to work. I'm going to have to go out to my toolbox and get me a small Phillips head to kind of tighten these down a little bit more than what they are. I don't feel comfortable with them not being any tighter than they are now. So I'll pause the film. I'll go out and get that. And let's see what's next here. Let's get out of this. Y plates. Okay, the next thing is uh, starting to install the Y plates. That's for the Y axis. Axis. That's the plates that hold that on. So let me go ahead and uh, uh, go get the screwdriver that I need, and I'll uh, catch back up with you in a moment. Okay, folks, uh, we're starting the. Uh, carriage plate, the Y carriage plates, these are the plates that be on either side of the machine and the motors and all will be on this. And all these parts here are what I need to start assembling uh, this part. Now what I'm going to do is go ahead and go through the instructions, read it all, bring out the individual parts that I need, line them up, get them lined up, and then reread the instructions to make sure that uh, what I'm doing is correct and I'm understanding what they want me to do. And then uh, once I've got that done and got this uh, one plate all completed, I'll come back and show you the completed plate and what I've done. So just just a brief to let you know these what I'm doing and which way we're going. Again, I don't want to waste your time, our video time, me hunting parts and putting parts together and, 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 and assembling these smaller parts. But uh, I'll tell you what I'm doing. And uh, when I'm done, I'll show you what I've done. So uh, I'll pause the video again, and uh, we'll be back with you shortly. 
Okay, uh, completed that task, putting on the uh, two smooth idler wheels. Now, they talk about doing, I guess they want you to do one plate at a time, but I didn't do that. I scrolled on down through the instructions and find out where it's had everything you've done to this plate do the other plate. Uh, I don't know why they had you do it that way, but uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, as I do one to one plate, I'm going to do the other the other plate because they're a mirror of each other and you have to do it to all four, I mean to both plates. Uh, the next thing to do is to put on the V-wheels. There'll be uh, two V-wheels on the top and two V-wheels on the bottom. So there'll be two, four, six, eight V-wheels and that's what all this uh, material is here. So again, I'll pause the tape, the video. Uh, you don't need to watch me assembling all these things, but when I've got it all done, I'll come back and, and explain and show you and explain what I have done. So I'm going to go ahead and pause for now, get the uh, V-wheels all uh, laid out, all the parts put together, and get that assembled on these two Y plates, and we'll uh, come back shortly. Okay, we've done we've done. We're completed with that task. What I did was put on four V-shaped, it's got a little V-groove in here because the rail runs in here and these V-grooves right on that rail. Put on the four uh, V-grooves and the two idler wheels. Now in the process of uh, smooth idler wheels and, and V-groove idler wheels, in the process of doing this I realized that I had mounted these two, the uh, smooth idler wheels, incorrectly. Uh, these two plates have to be exact mirror images of each other. And I had them just kind of turned around backwards. Also, another unique thing they have with these uh, wheels is these nuts on the bottom are called concentric nuts. And what they are, they're, they're little nuts with shoulders on, and those shoulders are offset from center. And as you turn those, it runs this wheel up and down just a little, not much, sixteenth of an inch or so. But it's an adjustment to get the exact dimensions you need between here and here when you're idler wheels, when you go on to the, to the rails like this. So that's what that is. So that task is complete. Uh, this is the Y axis uh, plates. There'll be a motor here and the other plate there'll be another motor and that's what runs the Y axis back and forth. Now. The next task I have to do is, uh, let's see here, I've got that done, got that done. They want me to mount the Y-axis motor mounting. So I need to just click to this and it should be the same process that I utilized or did when I mounted the uh, motor to the x-axis chassis. Now what I'm going to do is go ahead and pause the film, the video. I don't know why I keep saying film. There's no film in this, but it's all video digital as we know. But uh, old habits die hard. But uh, I'm going to pause the video and I will gather everything I need to mount these two uh, uh, y-axis motors and Go ahead and mount those, and when I'm done with that, I'll come back and show you what I have done. So, be back shortly. Okay, folks, I've completed that task. What we've done is on my two Y plates, we've mounted the motor, the two smooth pulleys, and the four V pulleys on each one. And they're supposed to be a mirror image of each other. And there you are, finally. Now I did have a few little whoop de doos here to go through, but we got it done. My big old FFSs didn't help a whole lot. Some of these pieces are really, really small. But now what I need to do is what I did on the X uh, carriage. I need to mount on the Y carriage the drag chain uh, linking and, and, and do that. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and find... Uh, find the uh, materials that I need and set them all out and get them all set up and go ahead and mount them and then when I'm done I'll show you the completed process so again uh, we'll be back shortly okay 
back again one more time. Uh, I found all the parts and completed putting on the drag chain link mounting brackets here. This is for the Y plates. Uh, again, the drag chain link will come in here and loop back around and all the cabling will be in that drag chain link and as this moves back and forth up and down the, the uh, rails it will again keep the wiring from becoming uh, messed up or tied up, knotted up in, in, in the mechanism. Now, also the next step which I went right on into was mounting these two little uh, four strip, uh, four termination terminal strips on each plate and I got that done. So, next thing to do will be, let me get over here and look at this. The Y axis limit, the Y axis limit switch. So I need to go ahead and click on this, bring that up. And find these parts, which is one limit switch, which that's not a problem, but I'm gonna go ahead and find the parts. Put them all together like I've been doing, assemble everything, go ahead and mount the Y axis, y -axis limit switch, and then I'll come back to you and show you what I've done. Okay, uh, finish that task. Now, if you can see the little limit switch right there mounted on the left plate, left Y axis plate. So this will go here and this will go here on and slide up and down the gantry. The next step is the gantry, which is the, well I said gantry, the rails. The gantry is the X plate that slides left and right. These will slide forwards and backwards. The gantry part will be the part where everything slides left and right. And that's the next step, start assembling the gantry. Uh, I'm going to take a break. I've been at this for a couple hours now. Uh, a little tired, so I'm going to take a little pause here. and. Uh, when I come back, we'll be, uh, I'll clean all this off and I'll get out what I need for the gantry. Be opening up my rails over here and getting all that out and assembling my gantry. So for now, uh, that's all we're going to do for a little bit. We'll take a pause and when we come back, we'll be assembling the gantry. So for now, this is the CNC Woodworker. We'll talk to you later.